Good day everyone. This is Pastor Charlie and this is my video log. I am pastor at Oasis Missionary Baptist Church in Barstow, California and also the administrator for my social seed network. And um, for today's uh, video log I have titled it uh, basically the the barking dogs of prayer and worship and um, I came up with this title at, because as I was studying you know Jesus gave us particular instructions on prayer when the disciples went to him and asked him how to pray he gave specific instructions and um, one of those instructions I want to talk to you about today um, Jesus gave us great instructions and a great example for prayer and most Christians are just missing out on a lot of success and abundance and life power in their lives because they don't understand uh, the details that are mapped out in God's Word concerning prayer one of those which I talked about in a past video log entry uh, the fact that God will refuse to hear your prayers if you continue are continuing to live in selfish sin and lust. Um, if you continue to live that way, you don't repent and turn around and start going God's way, God will absolutely refuse to hear your prayers uh, because they basically become meaningless and void. And... Um, when I was studying this particular passage of scripture, I got a visual when I read this uh, particular verse. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now, I'm going to explain to you why I got this image. The word heathen here... Uh, if you go to um, the Bible in basic English or one of the other um, translations of the Bible that's that is in uh, translated as Gentile instead of heathen uh, the word Gentile means dog so the Jews throughout history thought that anybody who was not a Jew they considered them to be dogs, on par with or equal to dogs, just brute beast animals, not really human beings. Um, so anyway, when I, when I read this and I realized that most world religions, most religions in the world today use vain repetition or they use repetitious prayer. In their worship and um, if we read the whole context here it says Jesus said and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut the door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when you pray use not vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking now here's where I got the image uh, do you have a dog that is a nuisance barker or do does your neighbor have a dog that just barks and barks you know there are uh, there are animal behavior experts out there who um, who explain that dogs have a language of their own and that each breed has its own particular barks and each type of bark has a particular meaning and and so on and so forth but um, you know what when a dog 
is sitting there barking, barking, barking. I don't care what the tonal quality is, if it's harmonic or if it's atonal or it just gets on a person's nerves. When there's a neighbor's dog that is just standing out there barking, 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 seemingly for no reason, uh, it just gets into you and just, you know, ah, you just want to scream. And you'll do, you would do anything to get that dog to stop barking, especially late at night when you're trying to sleep. And um, you know what? When I think about vain, repetitious prayer, when I think of all the world religions, and you can just go through the list, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Catholicism, uh, there's just a huge list, uh, Islam, uh, all of these religions use repetitious prayers. And, you know, you all are familiar with that uh, if you do something wrong and you go confess it to a Catholic priest, um, he may tell you to go say uh, 25 or 50 Hail Marys and uh, to show repentance for what you've done wrong. And this is really just repetitious prayer. Does it really have any meaning? Does it really have any value? Uh, think of it from God's perspective here for a minute. Now, God is sitting there and he's waiting to hear from us. God is never going to do anything for you unless you ask first. And the way that we ask is through prayer. Now, think from God's perspective, you're sitting up there, and all of these vain, repetitious prayers start to come up. Can you imagine that fairly soon it starts to sound like dogs barking? There is no real uh, subject to the prayer. There, uh, The prayers don't contain... Uh, the basis of the model prayer, which Jesus gives us down below here, and I'll get to that another time, uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is um, adoration, confession, um, thanksgiving, and supplication on the behalf of others, and then yourself. But you can just imagine in your mind now somebody just saying the same thing over and over and over again with an atonal quality with no real spark behind it no real life behind it um, and you know another thing it reminds me of is a kid who uh, who is standing there trying to get his mother's attention when his mom is busy you know the kids down there saying mom 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 until finally the mom, you know, it's like the barking of dogs. Pretty soon the mom gets so frustrated, she's like, what? What in the world do you want? And, you know, by then the kid has for, forgotten what he, what he wanted in the first place. Um, but he really just wanted mom's attention. You know what? In prayer, if we want to get God's attention... Don't use vain or selfish repetition. Don't use repetitious prayers. Okay, one side note I want to make on this is, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, well, what does that, what does that do to, um, you know, the normal uh, before you go to sleep prayer that kids do? You know, now I lay me down to sleep so on and so forth. Um, you know what? This that I'm talking to you about, uh, those repetitious prayers are fine. When given by children, it's a part of their training. But as we mature and as we grow as human beings and as Christians, 
as people of God, uh, we grow out of the repetitious prayer and we grow into the more selfless uh, prayer and um, prayer that is more in tune with God's thinking and God's word. So, uh, you know, uh, I see a lot of repetitious prayer in the world. And to me, uh, when I hear it, it's it's just like the barking of dogs. After a while, it just gets on my nerves. And I can only imagine how God must feel when we, you know, basically do the same thing. Uh, when we sit there and bark and bark and bark at God about stuff, but really have no substance or subject behind it. You just, you have to realize the power that God has given us in prayer. Uh, Jesus said, ask whatever you will. And if it's in God's will, it will be given to you. Ask whatever you will without vanity, without selfishness, and without repetition, and it will be given to you. That is extreme life power. That's the power for a successful lifestyle um, and even a successful business, uh, you know, because business is a part of life. And so um, I just wanted to share that with you, and I wanted to share that imagery with you. Uh, there are a lot of religious barking dogs in the world. Let's make sure that we're not among them. Let's make sure that we talk in a human language and that we speak uh, in a way that is very intimate with God and we follow the example of the Lord's Prayer. And you can go down a little further in these verses and follow the example of the Lord's Prayer. Um, I don't suggest, you know, repeating it word for word because then it becomes repetitious. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's vain or selfish, but it becomes repetitious and therefore can turn into something that's selfish. And so... Um, so the main message today is uh, don't be a barking dog, uh, a selfish barking dog, but instead tap into the power that God is offering us through prayer by talking to him on a very human and intimate level when you pray. Jesus gave us a great example. He prayed a lot. And when he went to pray, he always went off by himself to pray. Uh, he never showed off to others his prayers. Um, and he never wanted to be that kind of person. Uh, he never wanted to be a barking dog. And neither should we. And that's it for now. And we'll talk again real soon. Uh, and if you have a business or ministry that you would like to get... Uh, uh, you would like to promote, you would like to get more uh, visitors to on the internet, uh, go see the Social Seed Ministry and Business Network. Uh, I have some training and tutorials there that will help you get on the first page of the search engines. All right, and we'll talk again real soon. May the Lord bless you. Have a great day.